Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, webinar this morning. Um, we'll be talking about uh, um, Jenkins and uh, and Puppet today. I'll uh, uh, I didn't prepare any slides because I wanted to uh, jump right in and uh, show you uh, some uh, some code examples of uh, of what we uh, what we can do. Um, so I hope you can all uh, see my screen. Um, so the webinar is about uh, uh, Jenkins with uh, with Puppet, uh, and uh, specifically uh, to create um, uh, Jenkins pipelines using Puppet code. Uh, this is uh, particularly useful if you want to uh, uh, test many different uh, uh, pipelines that are, if you want to run many different pipelines that need to look exactly the same. Um, the, uh, the code examples are fairly uh, simple, but I'll, uh, I'll leave it up to you to uh, expand uh, into uh, more advanced uh, subjects. Um, so what we, what we will uh, showcase today is uh, both setting up Jenkins with uh, Puppet, which uh, is actually super useful and super easy also. Um, and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll look at the, uh, the pipelines. Um, the first thing we'll do, uh, I, uh, I'll show you the module that we'll be using. Uh, let me see here. It is the uh, this is Jenkins itself. It is the uh, we can search on the on the Puppet Forge uh, um, to uh, search for modules. Uh, if you search for uh, Jenkins here, uh, you will see uh, a number of uh, of modules. Uh, there is a module by S P J Murray uh, and a module by R Tyler. Uh, the R Tyler module uh, used to be maintained by R Tyler, uh, but nowadays uh, this is the official uh, Jenkins module. And you can see here uh, an approved label, which means that it's a Puppet approved uh, module. Uh, and that means as much as this is a well maintained module, and Puppet uh, puts their quality stamp on this being a, a properly usable module that has uh, uh, testing uh, in it as well. So uh, we'll be able to uh, to use that. The uh, SPJ Murray uh, uh, module, I'll show you really quickly. If you look into it, um, it's not yet a very uh, high quality module. It's very, very basic, uh, only allows you to, uh, to set up Jenkins uh, and nothing more. Uh, it might suit you very well to keep things that simple. If we look at the source code, for instance, uh, the readme is very, uh, uh, very minimal, and when we look at uh, what it does internally. Uh, we have here an init.pp uh, that only does uh, include these uh, repo install and service uh, classes. And when we check it out, all it does is make sure that the Jenkins package is installed uh, and that it has an apt repo, but uh, there's no check on operating system. So if you run this on a, a CentOS system, you'll have uh, some, some error messages. Um, there's no uh, nothing else. It's just installing the package and uh, uh, making sure that the service is running. So we won't be using uh, this module, even though it shows up uh, higher than the, uh, the Rtyler uh, module. The Rtyler module, when you look at the um, Puppet Forge page of it, has a good uh, uh, how to say that. Good documentation. There's a lot of uh, information here about how we can set up uh, specific specific uh, functionality in uh, in Jenkins, and we'll see that in our code base in a minute as well. Um, it has a bunch of dependencies. We look here, um, but not all of them are relevant for us. We'll be using uh, CentOS, so the apt module is not necessary. Zip repo is for uh, uh, SUSE, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, staging and archive, we also don't need them. So the only ones we really need are standard lib and uh, Java. Um, so version 1.6.1 is the latest. And uh, um, in our uh, uh, setup, we are using a, um, a control repository using uh, roles and profiles, uh, as is quite uh, uh, normal these days. Um, I have used for um, uh, setting up the virtual machines on my desktop a tool called uh, Oscar, 
Uh, Oscar is a, uh, a tool uh, developed by one of the Puppet Labs employees. Um, you can find it here at github.com slash Oscar stack slash Oscar. And it's specifically very useful for setting up Puppet Enterprise on uh, Vagrant. Um, all you need to do is uh, uh, install the, uh, the, the Oscar plugin in Vagrant. And then you can say Vagrant Oscar in it, and then uh, Vagrant Oscar in it VMs, or create the VMs uh, file yourself, uh, and then run Vagrant up, and it will automatically install Puppet Enterprise on uh, each of these uh, machines, provided you have the downloads in the correct uh, location. Um, so when we look here in my uh, top uh, level folder, I see an Oscar Playground. We see a config directory. This is where Oscar stores its YAML files that contain the uh, uh, configuration. Um, let me just see. Yeah, so the uh, um, we have here the uh, boxes.yaml that doesn't seem to be build uh, be used. We have the pe build.yaml. Uh, Notice that I'm using uh, version 2015.2.0 uh, instead of the latest uh, version, but there's not uh, not much difference. It's just a, a minor version uh, increase. Um, this is used to select the correct uh, uh, zip file to use uh, or tar uh, file to use. Then we have roles. These are all set up manually. The only thing I modified is here, set the memory to eight gigabytes uh, because the, uh, the Puppet Enterprise Master requires quite a bit of memory to, uh, to run properly. And the rest, I left it all to, uh, to standard. Here in the VMs uh, uh, file, this is where we set up the actual, where we define the VM. So if we wanted to set up a, another VM, we just copy one of these uh, stanzas and say fourth or whatever name you want to give it, Jenkins slave. slave. And this is the uh, box uh, that you want to use, the Vagrant box that you want to use. However, let's keep this out. So uh, what I have is a, uh, we'll use this box, the first uh, one. So the master is a CentOS 7, and the first uh, box is also a CentOS 7. Um, and uh, uh, very simple, uh, the Vagrant file with the Oscar looks a little bit different than a normal Vagrant file because it all uses the, uh, the config um, files. Um, so I used that to set up my, uh, uh, my boxes. And we see here my master um, in the top left uh, where uh, it has Puppet Enterprise running. It automatically brings this up on the correct uh, um, interface, so it'll bring up my uh, Puppet Enterprise uh, um, uh, console, which I can log in here. Default username and password, because it's running locally anyway, admin and uh, password Puppet Labs. And I can see my, mo my nodes here, master, first, and second. I didn't use uh, the enterprise console for a classification, so I'm using the uh, um, site.pp. So here in my uh, Oscar Playground uh, directory, I have a, uh, a Puppet Control repository that has been uh, uh, checked in uh, here. This is all the uh, commits. This tool is called source tree. Uh, it's uh, very useful for uh, uh, managing Git uh, repositories. Um, and when I look at the uh, control repository, I see here the standard layout of a control repository. I have an environment.conf where I specify which manifest is the uh, site.pp, so in this case, manifests slash site.pp. And I have a module path uh, that uh, is expanded with uh, modules Isinga uh, because I also use this uh, uh, repository as an Isinga demo, demo repository. Um, whereas here, um, we have the, uh, the, the modules Isinga uh, directory uh, that will create our, uh, that will hold our roles and profiles. Uh, whereas, um, 
we have here the manifest uh, directory that has our site.pp. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, then, uh, because we're using R10K, we have a puppet file here that contains our, um, uh, how's it, our uh, uh, list of modules. The Usinger modules are obviously not needed, um, but here we have the R Tyler Jenkins module, version 161, uh, Java uh, repository, and apt as well. Uh, as well as standard lib and a few others that we uh, might need. We have here um, on our master node R10K. That has deployed a, a set of modules. Um, so uh, that's all set up in the uh, ETC R10K. Sorry, you can see Puppet Labs, r10k.yaml. Uh, we can see here how we, sorry, if I use the pin command, we'll see better. So we have our uh, remote set up as the, uh, the public uh, Git repository. Um, Cache there is set to whatever the uh, Puppet Enterprise has uh, set standard. And then base there is etc Puppet Labs code environments. So that's fairly standard. Um, then if we look at our uh, um, uh, Puppet repository, the control repository, we have here uh, in our modules directory, this is where all the uh, public modules end up. Not so uh, interesting. Then we have here the uh, site.pp, which has a very simple uh, roles and profiles uh, set up. So the only uh, one interesting here at the moment is a uh, Role Jenkins uh, server, uh, which is on the uh, on the first uh, node, or on the node named first. So that's the uh, one of the other virtual machines that I have set up here uh, at the bottom left. Um, and there we just include the role Jenkins server. Now, if we look into our uh, role module and we look at the Isinga, uh, sorry, the Jenkins server uh, role. We see that it has two profiles: one for the Jenkins master and one for the uh, uh, Je Jenkins jobs. Um, fairly simple. Of course, you can add other things to this, like uh, security and networking and SSH and all kinds of different uh, profiles and a base profile. But uh, I wanted to keep things uh, uh, simple, so we have here a, a Jenkins master profile and a Jenkins jobs uh, uh, profile only. If we then look at the uh, Jenkins uh, profile, so we see it here, profile manifests Jenkins, and we look at the master profile, we see a few things. Um, we see that we are uh, just including the Jenkins class. This is the class that comes straight from the uh, Jenkins module, and we set CLI to true and install Java to true. Uh, they are both by default already true, so we didn't necessarily have to set them, but I, I wanted to make it clear that we that the Jenkins class in this case is the one that installs uh, Java, because Java uh, Jenkins is obviously uh, uh, running in a in a JVM. Um, for our purpose, we care about two specific plugins: the Git plugin and the WS Cleanup uh, plugin. Uh, and then we care a little bit about this uh, uh, Jenkins master class, which is uh, just uh, installing the, uh, the, the Swarm uh, plugin in Jenkins uh, to make sure that we can uh, run uh, the, the Jenkins server as a master and we can run slaves off of it, as we see here. Um, so that's fairly simple. Uh, when, we, uh, when we run this, uh, it'll set up uh, Jenkins, as you can see here. Uh, when we look into the uh, manage Jenkins, the, I have a completely unsecured uh, uh, Jenkins here, so uh, anonymous user has uh, all the uh, rights at the moment. Uh, I'll leave it up to you as an uh, exercise to uh, secure Jenkins a, a bit more. Uh, probably you'll want to hook it up to uh, LDAP with the, uh, with the LDAP plugin or the Active Directory plugin. Um, in the manage plugins uh, uh, section, we have uh, um, 
by default. It's just the uh, the default uh, set of plugins. Uh, and then obviously we will need the Git plugin and we will need the, um, uh, let me see, the workspace cleanup plugin. Um, so the way uh, uh, puppetizing with Jenkins works best is uh, first uh, you set up a development uh, version of Jenkins like this one and there you create the job that you want uh, to uh, have. So you see here, for instance, I have a puppet module Jenkins uh, uh, job that was created manually. Uh, if I go into this job and I look at the uh, configure uh, um, uh, section, I can uh, see here um, uh, what I configured for this job. I configured everything is very default. So I configured the uh, Git repository for a uh, for the Puppet Jenkins module itself, uh, funny enough. Uh, and I have set here in the build environment, delete the workspace before build starts. That means that it will clean out the uh, the workspace every time. Then I created a, a small, uh, simple uh, shell execution uh, build step. Um, that doesn't really do more than uh, just uh, running bundler install to make sure that all the uh, gems that are needed uh, according to the puppet module here uh, will be uh, installed. And then a rake syntax uh, um, uh, step that just uh, runs a rake test for the syntax. I can run that uh, manually as well. If I go to var lib Jenkins, this is where all the uh, configuration usually lives. And then we go into jobs. So now I'm in var lib Jenkins jobs. And then if I go to module Jenkins, I can see the workspace in workspace. Uh, here I can see the rake file and the this is where the uh, files get uh, checked out to the, the, the git repository so this is just the uh, simple jenkins module that you also find online here uh, in um, in the jenkins module that contains a rake file and that rake file uh, imports the Puppet Lab spec helper and the Puppet syntax uh, uh, functionality so that we can now actually run here uh, rake syntax. Very simple. So that is how that works. Um, then uh, Where was I? Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, in the Jenkins uh, setup itself, yes. Um, so we have an execute shell, very simple uh, uh, job here, and we click save to uh, to store it. Uh, and then that results in a manual module, manually set up module. I can click build now, and unless I am mistaking, this should run without any problems. Success. So when you look at the uh, console output, you see here the WS cleanup uh, uh, plugin deleting the workspace. This means that the workspace is emptied so that we can make sure that everything that happens is actually done by this job. Uh, then it clones the uh, remote Git repository, very simple, and uh, clones that into the workspace. Uh, and then the, the next part is here, uh, running a bundler install, uh, which installs a whole bunch of uh, uh, gems. In this case, it uses the gems because they're already uh, there. Um, and then the next one is test syntax, um, which will uh, run the rake syntax uh, uh, task. Um, so that's all fairly simple. So once we have a job that we uh, are happy with, uh, then comes the, the part where we want to uh, puppetize this uh, specific job so that we can multiply it as well. Um, Jenkins is fairly simple uh, when it comes to uh, jobs itself. Um, if you look into the uh, jobs uh, directory, so I'm in 
Parlib Jenkins jobs. If you look into the Jenkins uh, the jobs directory, you can see here three directories uh, that are equally named uh, with the actual three jobs that I have here. So that's all fairly simple. And I see my uh, my uh, uh, puppet module Jenkins uh, job here. So when I enter that directory and I look at what's inside that directory, uh, it's fairly simple. Um, I see a, a builds directory, config.xml, last stable, last successful, next build number, uh, and a workspace directory. The only thing I really care about at this point is the config.xml. And when I check out the config.xml, uh, this is the uh, configuration of the job in XML uh, format. Now, most of this can be the same. Let's say that I wanted to have multiple jobs uh, puppetized that all do uh, uh, testing for, uh, uh, run the same uh, tests for uh, puppet modules. So here um, in the top, I have the actual Git repository that we need to uh, check out. And then uh, the only other uh, part that we care about is the, uh, the command here. So it's up to you to open the config.xml file and see which parts we uh, actually care about. Um, but if you look at this uh, uh, shell script here, the command, uh, um, uh, this the shell script between the command tags, we realize that we can actually run the same code on each uh, Puppet module as long as it has some kind of spec tests. Uh, tests. Otherwise, the rake syntax uh, um, will just uh, give an error message, and that's okay for now. So over to my Puppet code. Uh, I have here uh, in my Jenkins jobs profile, I call uh, the profile Jenkins job uh, defined resource type twice. So I encapsulated the, uh, if I look at the actual Jenkins job, profile Jenkins job uh, um, defined resource type, I can see that I uh, all I do here is call the, uh, uh, the Jenkins job with a specific template uh, and a specific title. Uh, and the title is nothing more than the module name and, it, uh, and the, uh, the defined resource type has a parameter called module git URL. Um, so from the jobs.pp, I call the profile Jenkins job for Jenkins and for MySQL uh, with a module name and the module git URL uh, that I want to uh, that I want to test. Uh, fairly fairly simple. Now, as I saw here in the uh, job.pp, I am calling the template profile puppet module syntax.xml.erb. That template is here, and this is actually uh, the uh, exact um, uh, copy of the uh, uh, config.xml from, um, from the job directory. Um, however, I've put an ERB tag for the actual URL of the Git repository here on line, on line 11. Um, and I, I'm just printing the value of module Git URL here, so as long as I call the template here and I have a local variable called module git URL, it'll be printed in the ERB template and everybody will be happy. Um, so I use the Jenkins job uh, uh, custom defined. This is a, a, a defined resource type that is uh, made available by the Jenkins module itself. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly simple uh, uh, setup. Now, if I run the puppet agent here, Hoping it still works since last night. We see a simple uh, puppet run that doesn't really do anything uh, special. Um, and when I look at my uh, enterprise or at my Jenkins uh, uh, console, I see here puppet module syntax Jenkins and puppet module syntax MySQL. Now let's look for another uh, uh, module that we can uh, uh, use, something uh, simple, uh, probably uh, Puppet Labs Apache. Let's say I wanted a, uh, to add a um, build job for the Puppet Labs Apache. I can go to, oh, 
Uh, for the Puppet Labs Apache uh, call. Um, I have here the uh, URL for it. Uh, so I clone the, uh, uh, the Git URL and uh, from there I, uh, um, uh, I can add my Apache uh, job. I just go back into my uh, jobs class that calls all of the uh, custom defines. Uh, and from there, all I need to do is copy it, change this to Jenkins or to whatever, uh, sorry, to Apache or to whatever I want to uh, uh, change it to and make sure that it has the correct, oh, the correct URL, Puppet Labs Apache, that git. I say save and go to source tree and I say working copy. Add my jobs.pp to go and uh, add up, uh, it to git. Adding Puppet Labs Apache to the jobs to be tested. Commit and push. Then I go onto my Puppet Master and I run the Art and K deploy. Nothing much changed except that it will pull in the latest version of the roles and profiles uh, uh, code. And on my um, uh, Jenkins node, I run puppet agent t one more time. Which will now create the job for us. You see here. Puppet module syntax Apache. All good. I when I refresh my view here, I see the puppet module syntax Apache. Obviously, it's had never run before, so I'll just click build now. And here on the left, we can see it running. We can go and take a little look at what it's actually doing. Console output. It's running bundler install. Most of those uh, gems will already be there because they are, were installed by other uh, um, runs. And then it does a test syntax and all of that goes well. So my build is complete. You see, that way I could add very quickly by just adding here uh, jobs for different modules. Uh, I can add, uh, I can create those uh, uh, jobs directly in Jenkins. Um, there are different ways of doing this. Um, I find that uh, uh, just puppetizing the, uh, the config.xml of the job itself is the easiest way to, uh, to get it done. Um, it means that we, uh, all we need to do is uh, uh, create the job manually like we have it here at the top. Uh, and once we are happy, we take the config.xml that we uh, created by manually configuring the job in the um, um, in the Jenkins interface, and then we puppetize that XML file, uh, and uh, um, we uh, make sure that we replace the parts that we need to have variable uh, with uh, ERB tags. Uh, that way, we can very easily create dozens of jobs. And even if we, at some point, decide that the uh, that there needs to be an extra build step, because uh, at some point I want to go and do uh, run the full uh, RSpec uh, tests as well. Okay, so I modify uh, one of the jobs. I take the config.xml that rolls out of it. I puppetize it and I rerun my jobs and all the jobs will be uh, adjusted to what they need to be. Um, I can delete my uh, the, the module that I uh, created manually. I should be able to delete it manually oh, because I'm an anonymous user. I'm not actually allowed to uh, um, to delete uh, jobs, but this one is not necessary anymore. Um, so the only uh, uh, um, modules that will be automatically puppetized are these uh, here. Um, yeah, that's kind of uh, the, the, the whole uh, story. I could uh, uh, puppetize the, uh, the Jenkins uh, slave as well. 
Um, I made a start with that, but if you look here, there's some fairly simple, um, uh, let me see, code here for a Jenkins slave. Um, I, uh, I didn't uh, uh, manage to uh, finish it because I, uh, I had trouble with the, um, the DNS uh, entries, um, but it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward as you can see here. So that's uh, the basics of uh, uh, um, uh, creating jobs with uh, um, Jenkins jobs with Puppet and installing uh, Jenkins from Puppet. So uh, that's what I had to say uh, today. Um, I would like to open up the floor for questions. So either you can uh, uh, click the little button where you can uh, raise your hand in the uh, GoToWebinar interface, or you can type a question in the uh, questions uh, box. And I'll, uh, I'll give you the mic microphone if you have one, and otherwise I'll uh, answer the question. I'll wait one or two minutes to see uh, uh, if anybody has any questions, and then from there uh, we will end the webinar. Of course, you can make this as advanced as you want. Uh, it's fairly common to have jobs that kick off other jobs or uh, plugins that uh, um, uh, automatically trigger builds based on, uh, for instance, commits in GitHub. Um, that is more of the uh, uh, puppetization of the plugins themselves, and that's a bit more complicated because of the way uh, Jenkins works. There is no real, um, uh, how to say that? There's no real standard for how Jenkins jobs need, uh, Jenkins plugins need to create uh, their uh, uh, their configuration files. So you have to go and search for where it wrote a configuration file and what it actually wrote in that configuration file. So again, the best way is to just first set it up manually on a development instance of Jenkins, then go and search for the uh, configuration files that make those uh, that happen, and then uh, uh, puppetize those plugins manually. I don't see any questions yet. So if nobody has a, uh, a question, then... Uh, um, I think that will be uh, the uh, the end of it. Um, thank you very much for uh, uh, attending, and um, uh, we'll be uploading this uh, recording to YouTube soon. Thank you.